Hey, hello there, hey. Uh, so we're back with another video with another leak, no way! There's no way there's another leak because the last one was right, or the last one, or the one before that, or the... How many we done? Three? Yeah, this is the fourth. This is the fourth leak on MMO Champion. Uh, this one, unfortunately, does not have a logo. It doesn't have, you know, fancy uh, things. It's just a disgruntled dev, once again, on MMO Champion. So, yeah. This one's called Return of the Dragon Isles. No way. Dragon Isles. Sounds like a fun time. So, uh, yeah, so we're going back to the Dragon Isles, it looks like, and we're going to take a look at this leak on MMO Champion, and we're going to talk about it, and we're going to see what's wrong, and what's right, and what's going on, and, yeah, these are fun. I really like making these videos, so we're going to jump into this leak in a moment, but before we jump into that, guys, I'm going to shout out my Twitch, twitch.tv slash If you want to see me streaming World of Warcraft, patch 9.0. If you want to see me streaming World of Warcraft, patch 9.2 PTR, 10.0, uh, Return of the Dragon Isles, Alpha Beta, I'm over on twitch.tv slash MrGM every single day. Okay, let's uh, let's jump into it. So this is Return of the Dragon Isles. Uh, not the biggest leak in the world. Uh, this is by Rather Not Say, weirdly enough, joined in January 2022. Uh, so yeah, just last month, because it's February now. And uh, yeah, we're going to give this a read and we're going to talk about what is going on here. There's definitely some interesting stuff. So, yeah, let's let's begin. So, <clears throat> I was a dev on WoW until just last week. I've been with Blizzard for over a decade and I've always wanted to do this. Yeah, I mean, legal documents like NDAs and things like that doesn't matter. You know, I just wanted to post it on MMO Champion immediately. Nowhere else. Okay, so here is the next expansion. Obviously, we've been working on this since before Shadowlands launched, and the original schedule was to have it announced at BlizzCon 2021. As you know, live BlizzCons aren't possible right now, and Return of the Dragon Isles RDI is said to be the main announcement at February 2022 BlizzCon Online before it was cancelled. Other games that were due to be revealed are way behind, so they shelved the event. I don't think that's... Hmm, okay. Instead, there will be a standalone reveal in March, soon after 9.1 releases. Okay, so that seems to be the same. That there was another leak that actually said the same, the same thing. Weirdly enough, so yeah, I think people are just kind of shooting into the wind here, and hoping that they might be right. Because I mean, that's a pretty safe bet, right? I, I think what's interesting is that a lot of the uh, new expansions were announced before before the last patch was. Um, actually released. For example, Shadowlands was actually announced before 8.3 had launched. I think Ian actually made a joke about it on the BlizzCon stage. And if you go back in time, pretty much every expansion has been announced before the last patch is launched. So if 9.2 does launch and we don't have a 10.0 announcement, uh, that's going to be probably the first time in a very long time that um, that has happened. So yeah, going to be interesting. But this person is convinced that it's coming uh, in March after the patch launches. So we'll see what happens there. So, Shadowlands ending. At the end of the Sepulchre of the First Ones, the Jailer is defeated, and the cinematic shows the heroes, with a little help from a certain Banshee, use the power of the Sepulchre that Zoval was trying to harness against him, unmaking him to his original prototype state. This person clearly watches uh, Belilar's video with his theory on uh, the kind of like prototype Jailer being the corpse of the Jailer. Uh, that was a Belilar video. That was actually really, a really, really decent video, so I recommend watching it. So yeah, this person has clearly watched that too. Um, Sylvana surrenders herself over to the Judgment of Tyrande, which is funny because the last chapter of Xerath Mortis is actually called Judgment. Someone, someone's done their research, I like it, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Uh, who forgoes revenge and demands only one thing, that the Ranger General spends her days helping all those she's wronged and putting right everything she helped destroy. Sylvanas agrees and vows to begin with Nathanos. Got some bad news about Nathanos. Right, returning to the Dragon Isles, return to the Dragon Isles, returning in capital letters is an important concept of this expansion. We return to Azeroth, we return to some abandoned cities, and the Dragon Isles make their dramatic return. Well, we never went there in the first place. We also hope players will see it as a return to form after disappointing reception of Shadowlands. I don't think that's... That seems like a... That seems like a bit of a stretch. New continent, the Dragon Isles. I've seen this one before. Surprise! Yeah! Zoval failed in his attempts to use the power of Azeroth World Soul to unmake the cycle of life and death. But he caused enough damage to rouse an ancient force. The slumbering Dragon Isles have awoken. How and why exactly the Isles have magically reappeared between Zandalar and the Maelstrom 
is explained in the leveling story, but the islands themselves have been separated and untouched for thousands of years. Okay. As such, they are like WoW's version of the Galapagos Islands, a place where evolution took its own course, filled with incredible exotic beasts. The giant cat mount on the store. is one of the new creatures you'll see, as well as huge tortoises, birds of paradise, and race of humanoids that are inspired by marine iguanas. <laughs> Dude, the, the cat mount. So here's a fun fact about the cat mount. Um, the cat mount, unlike the bird mount, actually um, the saddle on it can't take it off. So when you take it off, it's just like a gap in the model. But with the bird, uh, you can actually take it off and turn it into an NPC, but the cat, uh, actually has that saddle kind of baked into it, so it's going to be a little a little weird for it to be a creature. I mean, it's not a massive stretch, but still, like, you'd think if they had it as a creature model, they could just put a saddle on it, you know? So it's just saying. Uh, right, anyway, giant marine iguanas, of course. <laughs> well, how could I forget? Who are feeding on what they think is an old god in one of the old temples on the zone. One zone is full of penguins. <laughs> and, of course, dragons. The dragons come in in different colors, but they do not belong to any dragonfly. They are ancient and see themselves as superior to any other life on the planet. They refuse to lower themselves by taking humanoid forms and look down on Rathian and the other dragons that do. Whereas, some are able to be won over and become allies. The blood dragons of the Shattered Peaks, the max level zone, believe Azeroth can only be saved with themselves in charge. They plan to birth the world soul, which they call Mother. Okay. Uh, they are the main enemies in the first part of the expansion. Uh, they are new dragon models, really detailed and gnarly looking. Some are absolutely massive. Alright, so we're going to the dragon- oh my goodness, so there's a lot to take in here. So we're going to the dragon isles, there's going to be some humanoid iguanas. Penguins are going to be there, that's exciting, I like penguins. Blood dragons of the Shattered Peaks, I guess Shattered Peaks is a fun new max level zone. Yeah, this one's uh, kind of out there. I mean, they're all pretty out there, but this one's uh, this one's definitely out there. Okay, features. Let's find out what else is in this expansion. Return to Teldrassil and the Undercity. Wow, that was quick. Uh, this is a big feature of the expansion. Player housing. Oh man, I don't, I, I don't like player housing. Probably an unpopular opinion, right? I don't, I just don't really get it. Players help to rebuild and repopulate two cities in a system that is compared to player housing in ESO. I.e., there are set spots which are phased for each player. The first location is given free as a part of the questing. The others are more impressive and meaningful locations that can be unlocked with special achievements tied to raiding, mythic plus, PvP. The players fill them with trophies from boss kills, weapon transports on their weapon rank, and furniture that is made by crafters. New profession, carpentry. Oh wow, that's fun. It's a big part of this. And in general, all professions in RDI, or Return to the Dragon Isles, uh, have a ton of new player housing items that they can make. Apart from cooking fires and anvils, all furniture is purely aesthetic, and there are no mines or herb gardens or banks available like the ward garrisons. So, player housing is essentially just not ward garrisons, but just the town hall where you put your stuff on the wall. Alright. Isn't that just what player housing is anyway? I mean, if I want to play player housing, I'll just play Animal Crossing or The Sims or something. I don't know. I feel like, I don't know, I'm not really into player housing. I know a lot of people like salivate at the idea of it. I just don't think it's that fun honestly i had it in eso i played eso and i put a bear and a, and a bed in my room and i was like well there it is that's 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 my, that's my house and uh and then i was like all right now what do i do maybe other games have better player housing i don't know but yeah that was um yeah that was that was about as far as it went with me uh as the expansion goes on these two cities are rebuilt the new design and assets look amazing the idea that is subsequent expansions and later in return to dragon isles what's it called Return to of the Dragon Isles. Oh, frick. Other locations can be made available as and when. Currently penciled in are Boralus, Dazzalor, and Grizzly Hills. Uh, lots of zones have been updated in the, in the old world with assets that have been made for player housing. So trees and buildings in places like Elwyn Forest, Westfall, Ashenvale, Eastern Plaguelands will find themselves in what they're calling a soft update. Alright, but why? Just because because they're putting player housing there? That wasn't even on the list of places. So wait, lots of zones are being updated in the old world with assets that are being made for player housing. So trees and places, okay. I mean, they've made new trees and shit, like, they've... <laughs> there was a person that made a video that, like, had Elwyn Forest with all the new assets and stuff. Like, it's definitely doable, they have the assets, like, they had... <laughs> you know, it's all there. Um, so I don't really know... Yeah, that's weird. 
Oh boy, new race and class. Oh wow. Dark Rangers. Horde, Dark Rangers are red-eyed elves you know and love. Alliance, give the Forsaken Night Elves that were raised at Darkshaw two new specs, ranged and melee, based on high mobility and simple fast rotation. The real twist, that each spec has different abilities available to use depending on whether they are leather or male armor equipped. With Undercity being repopulated and rebuilt, the Forsaken have a lot of secondary stories focused in Return of the Dragon Isles, and the undead Night Elf Rangers have been welcomed back into Teldrassil is a big plot that mirrors Trande's merciful actions towards Sylvanas. So, Dark Rangers... Wait, so they said there's a, a race? Where's the race? Oh, is it just Blood Elves? Is it just Red-Eyed Blood Elves and Undead Night Elves? <laughs> Fuck. Those skins are already in the game. Like, they, it's, it takes like two seconds. They're in. Wow, there it is. I guess the race, the, the class, yeah, Dark Rangers, that's fun. That sounds like a hunter, though. Pretty much. I don't know. Alright. Um, cool, I guess. Uh, new Raid. The Shattered Peaks, stunning location built around the jagged mountains of the Blood Dragon Zone. Blood Dragons are huge and hate mortals, but they also love gold. <laughs> and have a huge fiery refineries. <laughs> what? <laughs> there may just be a creeping fell influence hiding under the surface there too, dot dot dot. Ooh. I mean, if it's a leak, why are they not just telling us everything? One fight... Sees the skies filled with hundreds of dragons. Yeah, that's going to be nice and uh, that's going to perform really well on PCs. The final boss fight is a raid. Is a high prophet. Oh man, Zabikia, the ancient ruler of the island, which sets up more cosmic in ten point one. All right, time walking. Okay, this is fun. I like time walking. All time walking dungeons are raids, and there are a lot more to be available, are permanently open and scaled to level 50. New level cap is 70. Alright, didn't want to mention that at the beginning or anything. Uh, time walking tokens now be used to buy just about every transmog set, weapon, and raid drop mount. Oh my god, absolutely not. Raid drop mount? For every expansion from the appropriate vendor, there are some exceptions to this. There is no invincible on the vendor, but Tusk and Manoroth are currently planned to be. Every two weeks, a different expansion will be the focus of an event which gives extra rewards to completing appropriate dungeons and raids. Oh... I mean, that sounds fun, like having the raids permanently open and stuff, but the, um, the vendor, uh, no, no, no. That complete, like, imagine farming Mimron's head for, like, ten years, and then, like, you're just like, oh, it's on a vendor now. Yeah, don't even worry about it. Just put on a vendor. Yeah, that's fine. Right, dragon scale gear. This is the max level progression system. Players are given a dragon scale from each of the five dragon flights, each of which awards a new ability. The scales fit into a special armor slot on the UI that can be leveled through currency gained from all gameplay activities, even crafting. Only one scale can be equipped at one time. The black dragon scale is a PvP ability. The green scale is a healing survival ability. I'll be honest, it still needs a bit of work, but it's kind of a thing the beta players of feedback should really help with. So, what? You put a gear on and it gives you gear? Uh, abilities? Players are given a dragon scale of each five dragon flights, which gives a new ability. So you put a dragon one on, it gives you a, a black dragon one, it gives you a PvP thing. Green one's healing. Bit weird. You think, like, this? if this is like a main feature of the expansion, you think, like, Matey, who left last week, would probably know a thing or two about it, but I guess not. I guess not. Uh, Alright, uh, here's the last bit. There are of course two dungeons. Everyone is especially excited about the Ravenous Fold. A descent into the Old God Temple at the center of the in Iguan Iguandius Stone Zone. Is that the Iguana people? Imagine jumping into the Sarlacc Pit from Star Wars, but it's sort of full of Nazoth's tentacles and there are major lore surprises at the bottom. Did this person not play Twilight Highlands? Imagine jumping into the Sarlacc Pit. Isn't the, the thing in Twilight Highlands a literal reference to the Sarlacc Pit in Star Wars? With Nazoth tentacles? There's a major lore surprise at the bottom. What is it? Like Rexar or something just hanging out. One thing I could say is that the team have been having a lot of fun working on RDI. After Shadowlands, it's been awesome to make stuff in Azeroth again. And RDI really feels like a Warcraft expansion, if that makes sense. I'm kind of expecting this to get lost in the flood of fake leaks right now, and that's fine. I look forward to people coming back to it when the expansion is announced. Don't you worry, rather not say, I will be back when 10.0 is announced. Okay, so that was actually quite a lot. There was actually quite a bit there. So um, it just sounds really weird 
and like super, I don't know, like they don't really have specific details on stuff. The time walking thing sounds absolutely miserable. The funny thing here, I love this. People say this all the time. After Shadowlands has been awesome to work on stuff in Azeroth again. Dude, we literally had battle for Azeroth like two years ago. Not even that. <laughs> and before that was Legion, which was also on Azeroth. Oh. Dark Rangers, yeah, it's a fantasy for a lot of people. I don't really care for it, honestly. Uh, Undead Night Elves sound boring. Red-Eyed Elves sound also equally as boring. Um, carpentry is fun. I mean, that'd be fun. Player housing, I know, look, I, I don't like player housing, but I'm happy to embrace it if people want it. I know there's a massive amount of people that do want player housing, so, you know, you, you do you. Um, but yeah, I mean, it sounds uh, extra fake, honestly. I, it's the beginning more so than anything. I was a dev on the WoW team till last, just last week. It's been over a decade. I've always wanted to do this. Yeah, super weird. Super weird. But there you go. Guys, return of the Dragon Isles. Let me know down below. Let me know what you think of this leaked. Is there any ideas or thoughts in this that you think are, are good or bad? I mean, there's mostly bad for me, honestly. Um, I mean, updating the zones and stuff is fun. I like that. You know, like, yeah, hell yeah. Go, go do that. That'd be fun. But uh, yeah, for the most part, this sounds kind of rubbish. But, you know, it could be real. Who knows? We could be laughing at the real expansion. So, Return to the Dragon Isles. There it is. Return of the Dragon Isles. Apologies. Apologies. Return of the Dragon Isles. Gonna remember that because we're gonna be saying it for the next two years, right? Right? Yeah. Cool. All right. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Before I go, I'd like to give a massive shout out to my amazing patrons, YouTube channel members, and Twitch subs, of course. You guys are absolutely amazing. Also, if you like this video, guys, please do leave a like on it. I do really appreciate it. And subscribe to the channel. That'd be super, super cool if you could do that. I also have a partner's Discord channel, guys. And of course, I am now streaming on twitch.tv slash MrGM. If you want to see me streaming 9.2 PTR, 10.0 Alpha Beta, any other MMO content, guys, I'm over on twitch.tv slash MrGM every single day. And with that, guys... I'll see you next time.